Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 1st of April. COVID-19 cases rise to over 1,630 in India. UN envoy welcomes Afghan negotiation team for peace talks with Taliban. And coronavirus death toll rises to six in Bangladesh. And now for all the details. In its biggest spike till date, India over the past 24 hours recorded 386 new cases of coronavirus with the total now standing at 1,637, India's health ministry said on Wednesday. The surge in positive cases is due to a religious gathering that took place in Indian capital, the ministry said. India over the past 24 hours recorded 386 new cases of coronavirus with the total now standing at 1,637, India's health ministry said on Wednesday. The death toll currently stands at 38. Health Ministry Joint Secretary Lav Agarwal in a daily press briefing on current coronavirus situation in India said that the surge in positive cases is due to the global evangelical Muslim organization the Tablighi Jamaat gathering that took place in capital New Delhi's Nizamuddin area. Abhi tak total 1,637 COVID-19 ke confirmed cases aur kal se aaj tak mein 386 that is 386 nay positive cases aaye hain. Total 38 death report hui hain jisme agar hum kal se dekhen to 3 nay death report hui hain. Ab tak 132 log जो कोविड-19 कंफर्म केसेस थे वो रिकवर भी हो चुके हैं आज अगर हम देखें तो कल से कंपेयर करें तो नंबर ऑफ पॉजिटिव केसेस बढ़ गए हैं जिसमें एक मुख्य कारण है कि तबलीगी जमात के जो मेंबर्स थे वो देश में जब उन्होंने भ्रमण किया तो उसके द्वारा केसेस फैले हैं द तबलीगी जमात इवेंट हैज बिकम द लेटेस्ट चैलेंज इन इंडियाज फाइट अगेंस्ट कोरोना वायरस एज स्कोर्स ऑफ पीपल अक्रॉस द कंट्री वर फाउंड टू हैव कॉट कोरोना वायरस आफ्टर अटेंडिंग द इवेंट Several provinces such as Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh have identified hundreds who attended the event and have now been quarantined. The total number of COVID-19 cases in Afghanistan rose to 196 on Wednesday, according to Public Health Ministry. Afghan government has imposed a curfew in capital Kabul to stem the spread of the COVID-19 and the same measures was also imposed on three western cities days ago. Afghanistan's Public Health Ministry on Wednesday confirmed that the COVID-19 cases in the country has risen to 196, with highest tally from Western Herat province. So far, four have died and five infected people discharged from hospitals after treatment in Afghanistan. The ministry said that in the past 24 hours, 22 new positive cases have been confirmed, with 12 in Herat, 6 in Kabul, one in Ghazni, one in Baglan and one in Paktika province. Afghan Health Minister Firozuddin Firoz at an opening ceremony for a COVID-19 testing centre in Kabul on Monday said, the capacity of health facilities in the country will be increased to 1,000 tests a day by the end of this week. The centre was used for animal health previously, but it will now operate under the Ministry of Public Health and will have the capacity of performing 100 tests in 24 hours. The government has imposed a 21-day curfew in capital Kabul, which came into effect on Saturday to stem the spread of the COVID-19, and the same measure was also imposed on three western cities of Herat, Farah and Zaranj days ago. UN envoy for Afghanistan Ingrid Hayden has welcomed Afghan negotiation team formed to push forward peace talks with the Taliban. She said, it is heartening that despite the political impasse, the Afghan establishment have been able to agree on the diverse team. 
UN envoy for Afghanistan Ingrid Hayden has welcomed Afghan negotiation team announced to push forward peace talks with the Taliban, saying it is heartening that despite the political impasse, the Afghan establishment have been able to agree on the diverse team. The 21-member team was announced by Afghan government on March 27. It was welcomed by the President Ashraf Ghani's political rival Abdullah Abdullah as well as some other politicians who wished that it would lead the country to intra-Afghan negotiations. The team includes representation from all major ethnic groups and five women members and it is important recognition that women can and must be involved in reaching a sustainable and lasting peace, Hayden said. President Ghani and Abdullah have been locked in a power struggle since last September's election as both declared themselves president and held parallel inauguration ceremonies in early March. According to Afghan State Ministry on Peace Affairs, the peace negotiating group is an inclusive team and has prepared the agenda for talks with the Taliban in order to reach a negotiated settlement to end the ongoing conflict in the country. In news from Pakistan, with the number of COVID-19 cases rising in Pakistan, authorities in big cities are struggling to enforce prevention measures, especially among poor, who head out to purchase food in fear of curfew being imposed. The total number of COVID-19 cases in Pakistan rose to 2039, with 26 deaths reported across the country on Wednesday. According to the latest data released on the website of Pakistan's Health Ministry, the country's eastern Punjab province and southern Sindh province were the worst hit areas with 708 and 676 cases, respectively. Meanwhile, at the time when people are being advised to maintain social distance to combat the pandemic, authorities in big cities like Islamabad and Karachi are struggling to enforce prevention measures especially among poor who head out to purchase food in fear of curfew being imposed ek hath ke faasle pe khada karne ki koshish kar raha hai logo dur karne ki koshish kar raha hai lekin logo ka hajum itna hai be kabu ho raha sara system pakistan has shut all markets public places and is discouraging large gatherings amid the coronavirus pandemic rendering daily wage workers jobless masla sir ye hai ke public ko kisi cheez ki jo hai na tasalli nahi hai tasalli agar ho na to is tarike se public pareshan nahi hogi kehne ka maqsad ye hai ke agar public ko aaram mil jaye relief mil jaye government ki taraf se koi sahulat mil jaye to wo apne gharon mein baithi rahegi ab public ko yahi dar hai ke pata nahi kabhi curfew lag jayega kya ho jayega kya nahi hoga pakistan in february had a total of only 4 corona virus cases but the numbers started to grow after Pakistanis came back from pandemic-hit countries like Iran. Several provincial governments in Pakistan have implemented lockdown indefinitely to contain the spread of coronavirus that has risen to over 2,000. With time in his hands, a Pakistani grandfather in outskirts of Lahore city farms, babysits and reads amid lockdown. Seventy-year-old Mohammad Rafiq Abbas lives in Mominpura in the outskirts of Pakistan's Lahore city along with his two married sons, their wives and seven grandchildren, like most middle-class Pakistanis living under a joint family system. But as the number of coronavirus cases in Pakistan increases and most of the country is placed under a lockdown for at least two weeks, life has come to a standstill for retired laboratory assistant Abbas. Abbas said, he was leading a very active life and will not allow the restrictions to dampen his spirits. दोस्तों को भी मिस करता हूँ आना जाना भी है किसी रिश्तेदार के यहाँ भी आ चला जाता था बेटियों की तरफ भी चला जाता था मैं दूर हूँ ट्रांसपोर्ट भी नहीं है इस वक्त कि मैं चला जाऊँ लेकिन मैं खुद ही एहतियात रखता हूँ इसलिए कि ये वायरस जो है ना ये बूढ़ों और बच्चों के ऊपर ज़्यादा मौसर होती है तो मैं कहता हूँ कि भी अल्लाह ना करे Abbas, however, feels that the government needs to take stricter measures to compel people to stay indoors, despite his daughter-in-law getting exasperated with the children in the house. With rising number of coronavirus cases in Pakistan that has reportedly crossed over 2,000, 
Officials in Pakistan are scrambling to contain the disease by appealing to the public to remain inside homes and go out only in case of emergency. Moving on to news from Nepal. Amid the nationwide lockdown, authorities along with several volunteers have come forward to feed scores of animals near the Pashupati Nath temple in Nepal's capital Kathmandu. The animals were dependent upon food distributed by visitors to the World Heritage Site. Amid the ongoing lockdown in Nepal to contain the spread of COVID-19, the Pashupatinath Area Development Trust in capital Kathmandu and some volunteers have come forward to feed hundreds of monkeys, cows, dogs and other animals near the Hindu shrine of Pashupatinath Temple. The authorities came up with the initiative as the animals living near the World Heritage Site, which is now closed due to the lockdown, were dependent upon food distributed by the locals, devotees and tourists. A group of five to six people are joined by youngsters from nearby areas every day who then distribute food to animals at fixed time intervals. Meanwhile, movement of people has been restricted across the nation. People can only venture out to buy essential items or in case of medical emergency. Anyone defying the lockdown is detained by police as per government orders. Nepal has so far confirmed five cases of the coronavirus and no deaths. One more coronavirus that was reported in Bangladesh on Wednesday, while the number of positive cases has risen to 54 in the country. Bangladesh has imposed a nationwide lockdown from March 26 in the wake of four coronavirus linked deaths last week. One more coronavirus patient has died in Bangladesh while three new cases have been confirmed in the last 24 hours. The country's health minister Zahid Malik confirmed on Wednesday. This takes the number of deaths from coronavirus to six and infected to 54 in the country. So far, a total of 26 have recovered from the infection, local media reports said. Bangladesh had earlier announced a nationwide lockdown from March 26 until April 4 in the wake of coronavirus-linked deaths. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Tuesday extended the lockdown for few more days until April 11 to battle rising number of cases in the country. Security personnel have been activated to patrol the streets amid disinfection activities being carried out as the country fights to contain the spread. India's religious and charitable mega kitchens have started feeding hundreds of underprivileged people who are facing a crisis of food scarcity under lockdown to contain the spread of coronavirus. The 21-day lockdown has taken its toll specially on the daily wage workers. India's religious and charitable mega kitchens have started feeding hundreds of people mostly migrant workers who are facing a crisis of food scarcity as the country remains under a complete lockdown. Chief of Gurdwara Gobind Dham, a Sikh shrine in western Ahmedabad city said his religious trust has been preparing meals for thousands of people twice a day and distributing it to daily wage workers with the help of district administration. अभी हमारे पास 1000 आदमी का खाना सुबह और 1000 आदमी का खाना शाम को बनता है जो म्युनिसिपालिटी की गाड़ी और कलेक्टर ऑफिस के आदमी आते हैं वो यहां से ले जाते हैं वो जहां जाके उनको योग लगता है वहां बांटते हैं सिमिलर सीन्स वो विटनेस इन नॉर्दर्न लुधियाना एंड अमृतसर सिटीज वे वॉलंटियर्स इंक्लूडिंग बोथ मेन एंड वुमेन वर सीन प्रिपेयरिंग फूड ऑन अ मास स्केल पंजाब में लेबर है डेली बेसिस पे जो काम करते हैं उनके लिए भोजन का ये जो प्रबंध है गुरुद्वारा साहब की ओर से किया गया The 21 day lockdown imposed in India to stop the coronavirus pandemic has taken its toll on the underprivileged daily wage workers who are now left with no work in hands Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com slash asasia newsline and follow us on twitter at asasia newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.